In his first book, The All-Knowing Diary, author Daniel Rechnitzer expanded our horizons, teaching us just how powerful we are and how our belief systems are creating our very reality, driving our finances, dictating our health, and steering our every decision. Now, in his latest book, Mind Lies and the Truths That Will Set You Free, Daniel delves deep into the human psyche, smashing through mind lies, freeing us from the very subconscious belief systems holding us back. Brace yourself for the ride of your life as you come face to face with the truth about who and what you really are. Check out these highlights from the book. Hello, welcome back. The mind lie that we're going to be dissolving today is, I don't want to be alone. I want attention. Now, before we delve deep into this, I wanted to say that if it seems that I'm repeating myself, it's because I am to a degree. Now, it's very deliberate because it's designed to help you integrate the truth. And often that takes hearing the truth several times and in slightly different ways. So stick with me, persevere to the end, and hold the intention throughout to integrate the truth at all levels of your being. And holding that intention is really important during this process. So let's delve. So you know, it's become almost the worst social faux pas, you know, to be alone in today's society. But why do we resist? You know, it's this sacred opportunity for reflection and learning. Why has society placed being alone in the I'm a failure basket? Well, let's explore. Now, you don't want to be alone is because it feels like a rejection from the world. But a deeper truth exists. And that is, it represents rejection of yourself. To realize that you have already rejected yourself is far too painful. So you seek others company to mask the injustice of already having rejected yourself. So when you give yourself this loving attention, you'll actually be amazed at how that is returned to you from others tenfold. Now the secret is to love yourself first because it is the catalyst for all great experiences in life. But how do we get there? Let's delve more. So what is it about yourself that you have rejected? Have you been told you're boring or annoying or weird or unpleasant, unattractive or uninteresting? Do you feel unwanted? Now, whatever the specifics, these are all non-truths. They feel real, but they're non-truths, just more mind lies. You reject yourself because of these lies. To be yourself is not boring. It is not a failure, nor is it even worthy of rejection. In truth, to be with yourself is where the greatest shifts and breakthroughs occur. But this alone space will persist when you resist this understanding. Because it's only when you truly embrace your aloneness and harness it for inner connection and realization will this experience actually shift forward into something different. What you resist persists. So ironically, being alone is seen as wrong and undesirable in society for this very reason. Because while so many are controlled and held back by their own mind lies, they are envious of anyone who transcends them. So people controlled by mind lies don't want others breaking free, going beyond them. It's kind of misery likes company. They don't want to be left behind. So the consciousness of mind lies and it is a collective, not an individual experience, even though we experience on an individual level, that we connect to, has us believe and feel that we must surround ourselves with as many people as possible, as often as possible. Because in truth, doing this mutes and silences that inner voice, the inner truth 
that we are so much more than just needing someone else's attention. It's all very purposeful and sabotage is very purposeful. As soon as you embrace being alone and wander down that rabbit hole of who am I really, you'll discover an infinite universe within you that you carry wherever you go. It's a consciousness, a higher consciousness, a higher aspect of you that has your back, that speaks, that is your guardian, so to speak, the source of your intuition. Ironically, they are your best friend, that consciousness, the best companion you'll ever have, the best company you'll ever keep. They are your true self. What many haven't realized, because there is more to you than you think, it is impossible to be alone. You are more, you are one with everything else. In fact, you are a walking, talking universe, supported in full and loved eternally and unanimously, despite what the mind lies have to say. So being alone has been built up to being a bad thing. Yet the wisest of all self-realized beings know intrinsically that sitting without distraction brings great fortune. To be and embrace your own space opens you up, expands you to profound new horizons. It's the whispers in the silence that catapult your growth into great heights. When we resist being alone, and so we shroud ourselves with distractions after distractions from TV to Facebook, the news and other people who add very little to our lives, and in truth, we are never alone. Because in the stillness of the mind, it is apparent the unity, the oneness that exists between all living things. This mind line, the resistance and fear of being alone, is to avoid this very realization. That alone is bad or in some way detrimental or representative of failure. And this is simply mind lie propaganda. So yes, there are times when you may want companionship, where companionship is what is in your highest good and even a catalyst for even greater growth. But if that was what you needed most right now, you would not be alone. Space to discover your true nature is what alone brings. Being alone is a physical impossibility and therefore exists only as a state of mind. The very nature of being is a collective or universal experience, meaning it is something that the whole universe is doing in each and every moment. To perceive that you are being alone is to engage the mind line, or to be engaged by the mind line, and therefore the ultimate self-sabotage, disconnection, and the belief, I am disconnected. These mind lines exist by placing darkness over the light, a non-truth where there is truth. This sense of being alone stems from considering yourself that you are not even good enough company for yourself, at least not enough to fill the void. So you crave others, yet the void you perceive in you is being created by undervaluing yourself in the first place. The more we undervalue ourselves, the more needy we become and a slave to our needs at that. Do you know why you undervalue yourself? It's because you do not realize the truth. The truth is you believe you are the sum total of all the opinions you and perhaps others hold about you. These opinions are not based in truth. So believing these make up your identity. And so of course you undervalue yourself. 
So based on any truth, simply believing you are these is the undervaluing. The truth is to recognize you have these beliefs about yourself and what you think others think about you, but they are not who you are. You carry them and you experience life as if you are them, but you are not. And so the attention you crave is to compensate because you are not who you think you are. You've been lied to your whole life. Loneliness is a mind lie, as is the need for attention. The next level of truth is simply that you are all you need. And when you get that, you will find yourself enveloped by love from within you and, ironically, from all around you. to feel and to know that you are okay where you are and as you are. That's why we crave that attention. But you couldn't be anything other than okay. If you are safe right now, you are okay. Being your true self, you are more than okay. And there is a reason you are alone right now. To have another around would be a distraction from something that is of greater significance than mere company or companionship. But it is only in being okay with being alone will this situation resolve itself to a new level of experience. When you become okay with yourself as alone, this mind lie begins to melt away. It only exists in that persistence. When you embrace yourself as the only company you will ever need, then the next level of beingness becomes available. You elevate your consciousness. And the best part is self-love. The ultimate beingness opens up to you as a possibility, which in turn brings far greater strength and wisdom within yourself. One that will never have you undervalue yourself or never have you see yourself as alone or needing attention from outside yourself. Self-love, perhaps without ever realizing it, is actually all the attention you have ever craved, not others, and it's simultaneously all the attention you will ever need. It doesn't mean it's all the attention you'll get, but it's all the attention you'll need. If you had this type of attention when you were young, when this mind light came to be, self-loving, nurturing, you would not see that you are, you would see that you are self-sufficient and full to the brim of what you actually need. Beneath these layers of my lies, lies a well of self-love, never ending nor beginning, it just is. Self-love is ever present, but it's masked by these mind lies, like sun being masked by the clouds. And it appears that the only way to feel it, to perceive it, is with the aid of another. This is an act perpetrated by yet another mind lie. I'm no good on my own. When you see the truth, you will realize this too hides your greatness from you. It is yet another conspiracy to hide your truth. Your fears are that you are actually who you think you are. But the mind lie's interpretation is the truth. That you are your one life. That without another to comfort you, that you will realize you are not okay as you are. That you are unwanted, wrong, or faulty in some way. The reality is that who you think you are are just layer upon layer of my lies. To believe this, is you, to you, is disturbing and unsettling, of course. To so come to realize that hiding from a lie with another lie perpetuates this lie's longevity. Trying to supplement, compensate, keeps it alive. So meaning to supplement this need for attention, the avoidance of being alone with company pushes you in the opposite direction to what will actually cure this need. 
short-term band-aid. Interestingly, to break free from this lie, realize you are only attracting in others who see themselves the same way as you see yourself, so that you get to be okay with yourself. We attract what frequency we vibrate at. If we feel we are no good at the core, then we attract others that resonate at that level, rather than those that have broken free from this pattern. This isn't growth, it's worse than stagnation, it's resignation. So doing this keeps you perpetually feeling low about yourself, never allowing yourself to come up for air, to see the light, to see the real truth. Masking one's fear with the company of others sticks you to this repetitive experience of life. So if I am alone because of a lie, then learning the truth will fill me with company and the right attention. So what attention do you crave? The one that keeps you stuck but feeling okay? as in you're like others, or the attention that reflects your greatness, not your fears and not your mind lies. The attention that breaks you out of the mind like Which one do you want? So for in truth, I'm not really okay believing in a mind life, but I am more than okay when truth is present. So we need the courage to pursue the truth. So feeling alone stems from the feelings of being rejected. As a child and even continuously as an adult, being reinforced, being reinforced over those years. Yet you decided in that earlier moment that if others reject me, I must be rejectable. And then the ultimate rejection occurred self-rejection. There must be something wrong with me. This belief, this mind lie, perpetrated or perpetuated, excuse me, repeat experiences of rejection until it was your new truth, your ultimate truth. It was a victory of the mind lies. But the truth you neglected to see in each and every moment of that rejection was that those who rejected you and had you feel alone and wrong as you are, as you know, and as you should know by now, actually felt that they were not good enough to be around you. Let's get that for a minute. They weren't rejecting you, they were rejecting themselves. They felt not enough, not okay, insufficient to be who you need them to be. It was li literally their problem, not yours. To allow in, it's your greatness that others rejected, not your differences. You were not rejected for who you are, but who they thought of themselves is not enough. Greatness is scary to those that see only weakness within themselves. Greatness is your truth. It's who you really are. And we have been conditioned to fear being alone. Not just because it means we have been rejected, but for an even greater reason. Being alone with oneself is the most significant step we can take toward self-love. Self-acceptance creates that self-love. When we embrace ourselves as the only company we truly need, we ascend to new heights in our consciousness. And let's be frank, your ego identity, this mind lie identity, doesn't want that to happen. Being alone means loving our thoughts, quietening our busy minds, and being okay with stillness and silence. Why do we fear silence? Once again, it's in the silence where the answers become clear, where the identity is dissolved and the fake self has no presence nor power. It really is the workings of our mind-made identity that wants to starve us from this truth. The 
it's, it's identity, it's very survival depends upon you. And I always find it so interesting and symbolic how we've all been taught to believe these mind lies that are geared almost perfectly to do the most damage to us, to hold us back from every learning, every profound truth that sets us free. Now, our identity wants to live and it will have you believe all kinds of nonsense to survive. So what you truly crave is not what you think. It's not that you're even against being alone or needing others' attention. It's far deeper than that. What you really crave is to feel and connect to the nurturing that dwells within you. And we've come to accept others' attention as a poor substitute, as that temporary band-aid for what is truly life-sustaining. Stillness and allowing is an access to this reservoir of inner love, of the true nurturing you require to eliminate the false identity.